Hi there, Marshall here, and I'd like to invite you to join my email community where you can find additional tools, guidance, and support in healing your codependency, as well as follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram by looking up Heal Your Codependency with Marshall Bircher or clicking the links in the description. And you can listen to my episodes on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcasts anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And now, on to today's episode. Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Healing Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Berkshire. And today we're going to talk about another essential. The question that comes with this one is, are you blended or are you solid in your sense of self? So in a few episodes ago, we talked about sovereignty and its importance and and its role in healing codependency and becoming more of who we are. So you have contact with our own innate worth, our own power, our own boundaries, our own right to take up space. This builds on that concept of sovereignty, helping us understand how enmeshment leads us to feel this sense of being diffuse, blended, absorbed in other people's feelings, their thoughts, their priorities, their problems, their yards, the things they're doing. And we have abandoned our yard. We are not connected to our yard. We don't understand what our yard is. We don't know what it's telling us. We don't know what our own priorities or values are, what our needs are, what we want. Instead, we are externally seeking this information through the eyes of others. And this habit is called external orientation. External orientation means I view myself and my world through the lens, the opinions, the values of other people outside of me, especially people that I feel either have a sense of authority in my life that I am bonded with, that I feel a sense of connection or dependency on, they'll have great influence on how I see myself, my life, my wants, my needs, and the direction that's going on out there in my world. This leaves us feeling lost. This leaves us feeling unreal. We don't feel like we have a solid sense of self. We feel lost to ourselves, to our own values, to what to do in a situation. We don't know what to choose. We end up trying to find the right thing to do, the right way to say it, because we think that, hey, their approval determines if I did it right, number one, and two, it determines if I'm valid. This kind of external orientation or this enmeshment of our own legitimacy with other people's opinions, other people's reactions and responses to the things we say and do, leads us very vulnerable to manipulation, vulnerable to being love-bombed and sucked into very toxic relationships. And it leaves us empty. It leaves us in pain. leaves us very, very lonely. So what's the solution to this? It's called internal orientation. So internal orientation is the habit of turning inward first to see, sense into and see what you think, what you feel, what you're perceiving, what you want, what you need, what you're picking up in your awareness. Internal orientation, it says, what do I think? What do I feel? What am I aware of? How does this align to the things that matter to me, to my own values, to my own boundaries, my own wants and needs, my own capacity at this time? It centers you in the experience first. And once you have that information, then you can communicate it or relate it to those outside of yourself. That gives you an order of operations for relating me, then you. So I relate to myself first, then I relate to the person that I'm relating to. Hey, they ask me, hey, do you want ice cream, Marshall? Oh, I'm like, no. I check in with myself. No, I want cookies. And then you say, hey, I would like a cookie. I'm going to go and get some ice cream for you and I can get myself a cookie. Oh, okay, yeah, we can do that. Or, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Maybe we'll do something at a different time. Like, okay, there we go. But I had to check in with myself first to know what I wanted in that situation so I could communicate it effectively to them. In codependency, I wouldn't even check. I'd be like, oh, they want ice cream. If I say no, they won't like it. So I'm going to say yes. Yes, I want some ice cream. Even though internally I'm like, I don't want no ice cream. I'm just like, nope, that's not right. That's that's the wrong thing. The right answer is yes, ice cream. Then I'm doing something I don't want to do. I'm frustrated with it. I feel empty. I feel unsatisfied. I feel like maybe a little regret on that. 
This is very, very important. Our level of satisfaction in a relationship, our level of fulfillment in our life, the satisfaction in our life comes from choosing things that are aligned with us, meaning things we like, things we want, saying yes to those things, and then saying no to things that we don't. If we're externally oriented and seeking our value, our worth, our safety from other people, we're going to say yes to things we don't want and no to things that we do because we feel that might risk that connection. And if our worth is entangled and we're meshed with them, it's a very big risk to us because, well, if they don't like me, I, what happens to my worth? So with internal orientation, it allows us to actually resource our own answers, our own direction in our life, become more solid, more real to us. And it has a very huge impact on our sense of worth because external orientation worth is determined by other people, places, and things, specifically the rejection and uh, their approval of us. Internally, worth is sovereign. It's not judged. It's not measured. It's not evaluated. It's present. It's alive. It's something we connect to, something we listen to. It's something we allow to direct us. It is something that is part of us. I call it indomitable worth or innate value. This is part of who we are. It's just we haven't been taught to access it, trust it, embody or be it. Instead, we've been taught to seek other people's approval and avoid their rejection. The fawning response that causes codependent behaviors like external orientation, it does this so it can generate safety, it can generate some connection and generate some sense of worth. But in an internal orientation, the farm response is soothed by meeting our needs in different ways. We generate safety through healthy, safe community and relationships by being able to access and care for and soothe and, and process our emotions. We generate safety by understanding what our boundaries and our limits are and communicating and following through on those things. We generate safety by trusting ourselves first and then responding to situations based on what we need and what we value. We generate connection by understanding who we are, who others are, and then connecting with people who align with their own values and compatibility there, love and respect and care for us. And our sovereign, our worth is sovereign. Our worth is oh, autonomous. So we don't go into the self-esteem gym and try to make this work. Instead, we're actually connecting to a sense of worth we already carry within us, building trust in that connection, allowing that to come in a little more through titration little bits at a time becoming more connected to it and then allowing it to guide us more in our life that's our big work that's what we do in the codependency healing system its whole point is to help us connect to that indomitable worth and transform the way we relate in our relationships to ourselves, to others and to life so that we get more satisfaction more peace more freedom in our life that's the importance of of internal orientation. That's how we become solid and real to ourselves because we're not seeking outside ourselves anymore. We're connecting within, becoming aware of our own lived intelligence and brilliance, our own senses, our own perspectives. Then we build trust in those things, follow them, allow them to teach us what really matters to us and allows us to build skills and capability to get the things we want and need in our life. So where do we start with this? Well, with all things, we always start with a really gentle, simple practice for orienting to ourselves. So what I do with orientation, spe specifically uh, building a sense of internal orientation to ourselves, is we take a moment and we pause, we acknowledge, and we observe what we're aware of in our awareness. This is one of the first tools I teach in the codependency healing system is where, hey, we're going to pause, we're going to notice what's coming up. What am I sensing? What am I hearing? What is around me? What's within me? What's in my awareness? We're going to, we're going to notice it. We're going to name it. We're going to allow it to take up a little more space. We're going to observe it like, oh, that's what that's doing. That's what's there. This starts to build that inward awareness that helps us become more and more internally oriented build trust in that orientation so that we can follow what shows up for us there. Because if you're seeking your creativity, if you're seeking your intuition, if you're seeking your own purpose, your own guidance, your own voice, it's found within and it starts with this practice of pausing, acknowledging, and observing what is present in your awareness. So 
And I have your first step in building that internal orientation and becoming more real to you. If you want to go further in that, you want to take the big deep dive and transform your life in this area, you're welcome to join the Codependency Healing System. You can do that by taking my workshop, The Three Secrets That Heal Codependency Permanently. The link is in the description. And the link is also on my website at healyourcodependency.com. Come learn those three secrets. Get your exclusive opportunity to join the Codependency Healing System. And let's change your world from feeling unreal, invisible, and unknown to solid, real, and fulfilled. So, Thank you guys again for showing up for this episode. Go gently with yourselves. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, that share button, that like button. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts on today's episode. And if you're listening via podcast, hi. Thank you guys for being there. Go gently with yourselves. And I'll see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.